Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone that is new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're going to be featuring another Zassian team. Wow, we featured one earlier in the week, it was a lot of fun. It was the Lapdog kind of Lapras Zassian build that we've uh, eventually got around to featuring on the channel. And another kind of common combination with Zassian that we're seeing played in the format at the minute is Dragapult with Zassian. So that's what we're going for today. You can see the team on your screen right now. Predominantly got a very hard Trick Room mod within it with the poor gone to the Glastria and the Incineroar and then a very fast defensive mode with the Reggie, Alecki, Dragapult and Zacian on the other end of the spectrum. So we've got both kind of spectrums covered. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll go over the details of the team when we get into the matches today, tell you how it kind of runs, operates and why it's so good at the moment in the current format. And uh, we'll throw up the rental code at the end. As always, there'll be a poker paste down below. So without further ado, friends, hope you enjoyed today's episode and we'll get into our first match of today. First today, we have a team of Eveltal, Reggie, Alecki, Grimmsnarl, Landorus, Therian, Amoongus, and Metagross. So an interesting build for sure. It's got the Eveltal kind of Metagross combination that we've seen commonly used throughout the uh, Series 8 format. Uh, you've got a nice supporting cast as well with the Reggie Alecki. can provide speed control with the, the, the Electro Web and then the screen support, which is really pivotal to this team, especially if you're seeing a weakness policy on the Metagross. From that Grimmsnarl, you've got redirection as well from the Amoongus, which is going to cause us a few issues to say the least um Zacian here is actually not bad it doesn't really like going up against Metagross and definitely not against the uh the Landorus but Zacian can be a very key element to us I think Dragapult has a hard time against Eveltal for sure and a Trick Room is probably the best kind of route for us to go down although we have to be very careful around the Amoongus and if we do go with the Glastria it's kind of covered as well along with that Metagross so Lots of issues for us here to kind of consider. Um, but I don't feel like we've got a bad way around this. I think we'll go... Hmm, it's kind of having a way against the... Um, we need to get rid of the Veltal initially, I think. Uh, I think we want Dragapult for that Metacross. It helps us out a bit against the... Um, against the Metagross and the, the Amoongus to a certain extent. And I think Glastria is, is, is a decent option as well to kind of have for the late game because if we can remove the Metagross from the field, Glastria has a really easy time against most things on my opponent's team. And if that is minimum speed Amoongus, we're creeped by like a point or two. So we should be able to outspeed it in a non-trick room environment. And with the, the Assault Vest, you kind of presume that things like Eveltal um, are more specially orientated uh, in this format they are anyway, so it helps us out a bunch. Uh, now we are going to see the Landorus and the Grimstall come out for my opponent. Um, we get the Intimidate off onto us, uh, so they reduce the, um, the, uh, the, the attack boost that we have got. We'll be able to kind of return with an Intimidate of our own. Um, the worry here would be, it does the Landorus max? I don't know if they do, you know. I think one of the options that we've got is just going for a parting shot here. We could protect. We could potentially go for a substitute as well. That's not a bad option. But there's always the, 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 the idea of getting something like Glastria or, or even Dragapult on the field. I'm kind of more leaning towards Glastria here, though. Just because we bring Dragapult onto the field, you've got to worry about spirit break you've got to worry about foul play from the grim snarl now we could stay in with uh zassian but i think zassian is going to be quite pivotal to us here and you can see straight away coming out with the thunder wave it'll be interesting to see what this landorus does if it goes for a sword stance maybe earth power <sighs> the assault vest is going to help us out a bunch here but that does so much damage uh especially with the life orb you know boosted uh, but the parting shot, definitely a big help as well. So we'll be able to get uh, Zassian back onto the field. We've got a little bit more protection for it here. We've got to worry a little bit more, though, about that Thunder Wave from the Grim Snarl. Um, so we've got a couple of options, I guess. What we could try and do is... We've got our attack boost back as well, which is which is huge for us, you know. I think if we protect Zassian and we get Incineroar onto the field and maybe keep Glastra in the back. This is going to be a really tricky game. It's going to be... We're taking a lot of damage early on right now uh, on our Glastria, um, and it's going to be a pivotal Pokemon for us like later in this game, um, and we're not really 
doing too much damage to my opponent right now. We've got to kind of get around this Thunder Wave support from the Grim Snarl. So if we can get Incinero onto the field this next turn, then we can fake out the Grim Snarl, Behemoth Blade it. That's in an ideal situation, you know, but at the same time, we've got to worry about my opponent kind of seeing through that and then switching the Grim Snarl out to something else and getting a free Earth Power with the Landorus, but I really don't want to get uh, Thunder Waved. Uh, that's the big kind of avoid for us. If we can try and avoid that, that will be huge, huge advantage for us. Uh, fake Tears coming out uh, into uh, Incineroar, but uh, not affecting us, thankfully, because of our dog typing. Now, like I say, I think what we'll do, that Landorus is minus one. It's still going to hit us pretty hard. I'm going to take the opportunity now to go for that fake out Behemoth Blade into the Grimstone, remove the, the, uh, the, 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 the Thunder Wave threat that is there. It's got a Babiri Berry, it makes things a little bit more tricky, uh, of course, but we are plus one. We should still be able to pick up the knockout uh, and remove that kind of line of support from my opponent's side of the field. Yep, which we do. Now, we'll take an Earth Power for our trouble, but I feel like the return here is, is, is definitely worth it. Critical hit doesn't matter. There's no Babiri Berry there. They didn't have screens up. We're going to see an Earth Power actually into Incineroar here, which is interesting. So they're not targeting down Azacian, which is which is a big kind of plus for us because we've got the next turn where we can potentially go for that Behemoth Blade into the Landorus uh, and pick up the knockout onto that with the plus one. Um, and having their Intimidator out on the field uh, really kind of helps us, benefits us a lot more in this situation. So we'll see what they come out with next. It's going to be the Amoongus. All right, well, that's a little more tricky. 100% a little more tricky. Now we have to protect, I think, and we have to switch our field position up. I think Glastria is not a bad option to come out onto the field right now. Even Dragapult's not bad. It's just if they try to put it to sleep, but try to put us to sleep, um, that wouldn't be ideal. Are they going to go for Spawn to Incineroar? I doubt it. And I've got Earth Power again. That's why I could get Dragapult on and then go Max Airstream into the Amoongus, double tap into it. I think that's probably a better play. Puts us in a bit more of a dominant spot. Um, so, let's see. Let's hope we don't get spored. Uh, Lander is switching out. Okay. Well, <laughs> oh, new Veltal coming in. <laughs> Not the Pokemon we want to see coming onto the field as we bring literally our, uh, our Dragapult out. Hopefully they go for the Spore into the Zacian. Uh, the Protect kind of helps us out a bit there. Yvelto are going to have a, a really difficult time though against Zacian. No matter, you know, we haven't got uh, Play Rock, but we don't necessarily need it as we just see Rage Powder come out. I don't think we can keep Dragapult on the field, if I'm completely honest with you here. Um, <laughs> I mean, they the one thing that we could potentially do is max Dragapult, go for the max Airstream, go for the Behemoth Blade. It's just if you take a max darkness, we're in a little bit of trouble. But then, I still think we're all right actually doing that. I think we just need to remove the Amoongus from the field. Yeah. Sucker Punch shouldn't take us down. It shouldn't take us down. Romany Veltal. And I think the Veltal is more likely to max here than anything else. And if my opponent wants to stay in this game, I think they click the Airstream button, not the, the max darkness button. Which gives us a little bit of hope, potentially. We need to get rid of the Amoongus. That's the biggest kind of threat to us. Once the Amoongus is gone, Zacian can literally clean up this game. Uh, and we're keeping ourselves in kind of in the game by by clicking the Airstream button. And right now, getting that plus one onto Zacian, which is going to be super, super helpful. Okay, my opponent is going to max as well, which is exactly what we want to see. So it means the Dragapult is going to be able to get this attack off. Now, the worst case scenario is that the Amoongus does protect. Um, and that will mean that we're going to miss the the, uh, the knockout here, which is not ideal. Uh, we probably lose Dragapult in the process, but not the end of the game, for sure. Rage Powder, exactly what we want to see. Perfect. Cobra Berry, do not mind if we see that. Um, now, Zacian is going to be... Ooh, oh wow okay so the life orb here helping us out a bunch meaning that we're going to get the behemoth blade plus one onto the veltal which is huge for us because the damage that we're going to be able to do means that it's going to be in range next turn um for sure and if they click the airstream button then we're we're in i think we just we're in an end game position where we just win so if they've hit max darkness we're in a little bit of trouble 
Oh my god, that does so much damage. Like, Zacian is so bust, isn't it? Yeah, the airstream. They have to keep pace with us. That's the thing. Yeah. So now, like I say, we're in that position where we can just win this game. We can go for the lander. We just double tap into landerus here because once we get rid of the lando, it's a clear, clear, clear win uh, with the behemoth blade onto the, the Veltal. It's not really going to have a way to hit Zacian for very good damage. The only thing that I would say is maybe, maybe we do see a protect on the landerus. It frees up a turn potentially. Uh, on the Avelto, but then again, if they click the Max Darkness button, then they're not clicking the Max Airstream button. So we're kind of staying ahead of them, you know. This is why I say we're in a, a very good end game spot here, especially without the threat of Sucker Punch not really troubling us too much. Um, but a combination of Airstream, I mean, even a Max Airstream now might be enough to, 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 to do the job. I don't know. But we'll double tap into the Landorus regardless. That's the biggest threat at the minute because we can't intimidate it. We know it's got that big earth power. Um, and I think, yeah, my opponent's kind of realized that we're in an end game position there. But like I said, very tricky game, but we managed to kind of position ourselves well. And I think getting the Dragapult in, we kind of toying with the idea at the time, but it was the better call at the time to give us that speed advantage even though things didn't look great against the Avelto, it kind of worked out all right in the end there. So, very good game to my opponent. Nice one for us to kick off with today, and we'll jump into our next match of the episode. Next, we've got Ravenscar playing a very spicy-looking team of Sableye, Dragonite, Rillaboom, Kanto, Marowak, Kyoga, and Comfy. So, yeah, like I say, a spicy-looking team. There's all sorts of stuff going on here. You've got Lightning Rod support initially uh, that jumps out on me straight away from the Marowak protecting the Kyogre, making it difficult for us to utilize Regilecki if we want to in this in this game. And then you've got the Sableye, it's going to have Quash, potentially Will-O-Wisp, make it difficult to really utilize Zacian. We need to try and position ourselves if we're bringing it with a substitute so we're not really threatened by that too much. You're going to have the Comfy as well, can throw up Trick Room uh, for the Kyogre, for the Dragonite, for the Marowak. Um, and it can also proc a weakness policy that's likely on that Dragonite, you know, there's lots of support going on here. Really like the look of this team, so massive props to my opponent. It's going to be very difficult for us to kind of uh, deal with, for sure. I think the best way for us to kind of approach it is maybe from a Trick Room perspective, because if we can get the Trick Room up, my opponent has got Pokemon that can perform in Trick Room, but uh, they're not predominantly going to want to be in the trick room the sableye is the big issue for me here though really the sableye is the problem because i think um yeah it's really really tricky really tricky indeed um okay we're gonna have to lock in we're gonna have to lock in very quickly i think because we are otherwise gonna time out and um yeah i've talked too much and um not enough time to think about it but we're locked in with We've got a Trick Room mode in. We've got the Zacian. We've got the Dragapult in there. It's just going to be very difficult because you're looking at all the options on my opponent's team. They've got really good support options that really kind of allow them to get the setup that they need and really, at the same time, kind of prevent us from, from uh, performing like we want to be able to. So we've got Rillaboom. We've got Kyogre coming out from my opponent. Um, we've got Dragapult and P2. So imagine probably fake out from the Rillaboom. Take up from the Rillaboom. Maybe max the Kyogre. Maybe. I don't want to click the Trick Room button, do I? I don't really want to click the max button either. Um. We could just Dragon Dart to get damage onto the field, you know? I think if we go that route, though, then we're not maxing Glastria, which could be a better option in this game, in all honesty. Like, Glastria in the Trick Room is the best case scenario for us, maxing that and then doing all the work that we need to. Uh, we could max Fly. Max Phantasm is probably the better option into Kyogre here. And then, uh, do we try Attack as well into Kyogre? I'm not really too worried about the Rillaboom right now. I mean, a knockoff wouldn't be ideal, but I'm not commonly seeing knockoff on Rillabooms, you know? Um, we just need to be able to get damage onto this Kyogre and really nerf this, this water spout damage that potentially could come out. If it's Scarfed as well, it's a little bit tricky. 
But, um, you know, the one thing I will say in this episode, when we're featuring Dragapult, predominantly one of the teams, you know, it's, it's one of those Pokemon that feels like it got completely forgotten about at the start of Series 8, and now at the end of Series 8, it's back and it's doing so much work, you know, and it's really nice to see Dragapult, one of my favorite Pokemon. Um, so being able to kind of see it do a lot of work and kind of step up in the ranked ladder, uh, it, it's really nice to see. There's the water spout. Uh, thankfully, we do attack into the Kyogre and, and minimize the damage there. <laughs> the knockout comes out, takes a life orb, and takes a chunk of damage, which is not what we want to be seeing. But at the same time, we should be able to remove the Kyogre with the tri attack. Should be enough. Yeah, and remove that restricted from the field. Um, we will be able to get the Rillaboom the next turn, um, even without the life orb. We'll be able to get it. Uh, and if we suspect that we'll lose Dragapult, we could always throw the Trick Room up at the same time. Um, the issue would be if the Comfy comes in here, because the Draining Kiss probably enough to get Dragapult from this range. Uh, which would make things a little more tricky, for sure. Dragonite coming onto the field. Big old Draggy. Okay, well, we know what we're going to do now. We're going to go for the Airstream. Mm, uh, 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 I don't really want to Airstream, though. That's the problem. I want to go for the Wormwind. Reduce the attack down on the, the Dragonite at the same time. It's going to be multi-scale. And I need to Trick Room. I need to Trick Room. Yeah, I think we Wormwind. Because the problem is... Airstreaming here... It'll give us a speed boost with P2. And we don't really want any speed increases if we're going to set up a Trick Room. Lose Dragonite. Uh, lose Dragapult, sorry. Um, and then get Glastria onto the field. And then we're in a phenomenal spot. Phenomenal position. So, as I commonly like to say, a little wink and a nod to Shoe VGC. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's see where we go from here. Aqua Jet, not going to be enough, unfortunately. Uh, the Max Wormwind, and my opponent not maxing here, which is interesting. Grassy Glide, is that going to be enough? It is. <sighs> okay, that's fine. It's still alright. We're still alright. Grassy Glide or Dragapult. The knockoff, I said it was uncommon, but it is a very good tech on Rillaboom, all the same. Um, and we get that Trick Room up. So, uh, uh, it's still tricky, of course. It's still very tricky, because the Rillaboom with the uh, the Life Orb does pose us a lot of threats. Mm. But we still have Zacian to come in, you know? I think the, Drag the Dragonite is probably more... Uh, threatened here than anything else whereas we could get we could just get rid of yeah I think we go for yeah let's get rid of the Rillaboom right now I'm not going to Ice Beam because I do fear the weakness policy there I'm going to try attack break that multi skill if it is there I'm not too worried about the Dragonite at the minute as long as we don't proc a weakness policy we're kind of alright, and if we can break the multi-scale, then Glastria the next turn is going to be able to uh, to do plenty of work to it, you know? And then, hopefully by the end of this trick room, we've just got Zacian to come in and kind of clean up what's left, if there is anything left. But I feel, you know, this combination in, in a trick room is so dominant. I'm going to see Mawa come in. Okay, well, that's interesting as well. No comfy. Wow, we're going to see a Rillaboom. Go for as a max. Now, whatever this hits, this is bad for us. This is bad because it's going to do so much damage in the terrain. I don't think a, uh, an icicle crash is going to be enough to get it. No way, is it? I don't even a double up would be enough to get it, you know? Um, oh, well, maybe, maybe the double up would have been, you know? Maybe P2 gets it next turn with the, uh, the ice beam. Might have been a better play going after it like that but uh, try attack oh and we get the freeze onto the Marowak that's a bit unfortunate for my opponent where's the Rillaboom gonna go with its G-Max drum solo boosted by the life orb gonna be more than an oh wow wow Glastria takes it like a champ okay there we go love to see it love to see it um and now Ice Beam gonna be enough from P2 to get that uh Rillaboom we can go for the uh Icicle Crash into the Marowak, and that should be enough to get it as well. So let's click in with that, and let's click in with that. Um, Icicle Crash onto the Marowak, Ice Beam onto the Rillaboom, 
Uh, Relibium switching out now. Okay, foregoing the the the, the max because probably wants to uh, utilize Grassy Glide a bit later on in this match. Dragonite going to switch in on an Ice Beam. It's probably got the multi scale though. It may not as well, you know. Um, and it can't say the freeze didn't matter, you know. We are just removing the the Marowak before it's able to do anything. But you know, if they weren't frozen, they may go for. Um, a protect or something like that you know there's always always those possibilities is the ice beam going to come out and uh, do it might be in a focus as well no definitely not in a focus definitely multi-scale and um yeah proccing that weakness policy that we did suspect and did fear a little bit um grassy terrain still kicking on in the field so that's that's a good thing for us you know the really boom going to come back onto the field now and the grassy terrain gonna gonna exit the field after that, which is which is the big kind of plus for us. Problem is, it's gonna have fake out, so we've got to double tap into that that dragonite here because, well, we need to because otherwise they're gonna fake out one thing and we're not gonna be able to to remove it from the field with the other. If we don't double target into it, you know, if we prioritize the really boom at this stage, which we don't necessarily need to, could grassy glide into the. Um, the the glass tray, but not going to be enough now nah, not going to be nowhere near enough we might be able to just clean the field now oh aqua jet i like it i love the aqua jet you know it's such a good tech on uh, dragonite and especially if the rain's up as well it really does benefit it uh, but the ice beam unfortunately going to be enough for us to uh, take this one grassy terrain going to exit the field here and zassian going to come onto the field first as well which is going to be more than enough for us to kind of clean this one up and uh secure another victory going forward unless i've forgotten about a certain pokemon i don't think i've forgotten about anything in this one have i i'm pretty sure that really boom's the last pokemon on the field for my opponent anyway and um zassian for us dragapult nice to see it doing some work today obviously really boom making life very difficult for it and then the my opponent did well you know to get rid of it without it really being able to get a second max move off um it was pretty pretty Made it pretty difficult for us. Uh, we'll just Behemoth Blade. We don't need to worry about it attacking us here because we're still in a trick room and we're going to be able to just Ice Beam win this match with no Grassy Glide, my opponent. But I mean, Life or Boom is something as well, you know? Like, I've all, I, I'm always a big fan of like Banded Rillaboom, but Life Orb is just, it's disgusting the power that it's got with that Grassy Glide when the uh, terrain's up. And then if you do max it as well, whew, it's uh it is chunking whatever it is hitting into if not picking up the knockout like you know i'm surprised glastria actually survived that i really am but uh thankfully we did my opponent just taking their time now to uh to pick their last move see what their options are when you know they don't really don't really have any come on click it at least they're not full fit in, so we can see the end of this match it's a very good game and like i said at the very start you know my opponent's got an amazing team make it very difficult for us in um, team preview to pick because of the options that we, they've got throughout the team that are so threatening to us but thankfully we were able to come out on top i'm really really happy to be able to feature a team like that as well when we're doing the episode it's always nice to have these kind of not so commonly used pokemon in a kind of combination where it's like it looks pretty disgusting to uh to deal with from the start but very good game to my opponent and uh we'll jump over now and get you guys this rental code for today's team <laughs> Okay, friends, here is the rental code for today's team. If you do try it out, as always, like I always say, have fun with it and let me know down in the comment section below if you tried it out and uh, you've really enjoyed using it. I think there's lots of elements to this team that are very strong and some of the probably the strongest Pokemon in the format as well. Uh, the Regieleki there, we didn't really get to see too much of it today, but can perform a very pivotal role in certain teams, especially if you're seeing... Uh, Shadow Rider Calyrex, it can really help out, you know, just with the Electro Reb against against those Pokemon really kind of uh, disrupt what they're trying to do. And it allows Dragapult a bit of room there because obviously with a clear body, you're not affected by the speed drops. Um, so you can you can really kind of pressure those teams a lot better with that support. And then you've got the Trick Room uh, mod with the, the P2 Glastria and the Incineroar, which is just phenomenal anyway. And then Zacian kind of making up the numbers at the end. It's always a good Pokemon to have late game, Zacian. Come in late game, it's very fast. It's going to be able to clean up, especially with that attack boost. If you've mitigated or got rid of the Intimidate abusers on your opponent's team, it makes it
it very easy for Zassian to kind of come in and do the kind of sweep up job at the end. But uh, I really like this team, really enjoy it. I hope you do. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and uh, we'll be back very soon with more VG content on the channel. So have a great rest of your day, whatever you're up to. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you all for another episode very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.